As always, this episode of the 1878 FM podcast is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Make Green King your go-to destination for the season's final stretch. Why? For one, you can watch every televised Toffees game down with delicious food and refreshing beverages. And with 900 sports clubs dotted around the UK, chances are you're within walking distance of your local Green King. Let's be honest, watching football is way better with friends and family. So get the squad together for every televised Premier League fixture in an atmosphere worth sharing. That includes huge title showdowns, race for European qualification and the nail-biting relegation system. Pointers. Don't forget to download the Green King Sports app to enjoy your exclusive competitions and discounts whenever there is a game on. Right, on with the podcast. Hello, welcome. It is the 1878 FM podcast with me, Ped. I'm joined by Dave Vitti and Sam Avery to look back, look forward and whatever else we feel we need to have to do to get through this week and the coming weeks. Uh, no Baz this week. He is... Um, Sunning himself on a beach, I, I believe. Not sure which beach, but uh, it might. It may be a nudist beach, Dave. Vitti, what you what, what what are you saying on this? Are we allowed to say that he's gone to Florida, or are we keeping that under wraps? I think you've just told. I mean, Florida's a big place, isn't it? As long yeah, as you don't, it is. As long as you don't give the house number away or the key code to the to the villa he's staying in, I think we're all right. We don't even have to say which coast he's on because obviously there's two. There's the Atlantic coast and there's the Gulf coast. You know, it's quite narrow as well for those that have been to Florida. As you notice, I'm sort of padding and killing time because what I'm trying to do is avoid talking about the other night. So the more that we can talk about <laughs> yeah. Floridian geography, mm-hmm. that's something I've never said before. No. And I think that's only a good thing. Sam, you'd agree? I'd agree, yeah. I'm trying to stay super positive at the moment by just avoiding reality and yeah. pretending it's a different year. Mm. So... <laughs> I'm, I'm not really succeeding that well, but I've just had a yogurt and I'm feeling positive. Yeah, right. what, what flavor was the yogurt, by the way? It was a uh, salted caramel protein yogurt. So it tricks uh, you into thinking that you're actually eating something yeah. healthy, even though you're not. It's like, you know, low, <laughs> high in fiber smack. It's it's yeah. not really, it's just loads of lies. In that's it, got nice. that's got Aldi Mid Lyle written all over it. That has. Yeah. 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 That's where I got it. <laughs> I get all you, my stuff from there. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you? Although it did go in a little, little yesterday, and I was impressed by the bakery. It's one thing Aldi lacks as a bakery. But are you more of a? Because I think this is interesting, right? And again, this is this is this is um, diversion tactics. Do you find that you're either Aldi or little, right? Because I know that I am, and I've mm. been to both. But I'm an Aldi man. That's my team. Well, right? the, Al- the Aldi is very close to mine, and I know my way around it. And I think that's a big yeah. part of the supermarket experience is knowing mm. your way around. Because the minute you are, you are confronted with not knowing where the almond milk is, but also yeah. too ashamed to ask anybody who works there, mm. uh, it, it does create massive problems. You need to know the geography of the yeah, supermarket. Yeah, yeah. But that said, I go to Aldi all the time, but I once went to a different Aldi, and mm. everything was almost the same, but not quite the same. And I felt like I had dementia. I was walking yeah. around, and I didn't know where to go. And I, I, you can't ask the staff, because they're too busy bashing into you to try and mm. you know, fit mm. whatever it is they're trying to restock. It was a nightmare. The staff in Aldi, I feel like not only will will they be tested on all the normal things, but I think also that there must be a, a time set to get when that call goes out for someone to own the till. They must do a te- like a nought to you know nought to sixty or whatever it is. How fast? No, they do like when you see those American footballers mm. where they do that day of test to see if they're actually any good. Uh, what's your sprint speed? There must be a sprint speed from the back where the ale is to the front to get to yeah. a till because the last thing because what you uh, till number four is opening, which are great words by the way. But mm. then you get that lag, that lag between you getting to that till and then no one being there and watching the till that you were in get shorter and shorter and shorter. That to me is one of the great like it, f- frustrations of life. So the people who come to take that, there has to be some kind of speed record for that. I I think. Well, that and also, I mean, the other thing that they're on a different. Well, they're in a different league as far as I'm concerned. And I can't compare them to Little because I haven't studied the form. But 
in terms of <laughs> other regular supermarkets, the speed at yeah. which they scan is just off the scale. Yeah. Oh, right? totally. Which means that they must have intensive training courses mm. for their till operatives because they're in a completely different league. Mm. And the way that they can just get beans and soup and go bang, 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 like a machine. And it's not just in- the physical attributes. It's also they know how to read the game and play with you because they yep. spot if you're feeling smug or if you're mm. ahead of it or if you dare to engage in a conversation with somebody who's two yards behind it and look away for a second, then they just mm. up, they go up a gear. They're like Man City. They just go, right, we've got you now. We just and start throwing yeah. and all these protein yogurts that are all the tops breaking and stuff. Yeah, and, and if you're stuff. using if you're using regular bags like normal sized bags, <laughs> which I don't, I'll tell you I'll tell you how how my bags work in a minute, Sam, because I don't think you're on that podcast when we last dis- d- discussed no. it. Right, is that if you're using regular bags, I think it's too much for for a human to you know you're trying to do different bags and the stuff's coming at you and you just can't cope, which no. is why I always employ. I, I've got a no bag method, right? Which is not only oh, good for yeah. the planet, but it's it's good for for Aldi for me, right? So what I do, all my stuff goes into my trolley, put it all on the belt, trolley at the end. Again, no bags, right? Mm. So then when the stuff comes off, straight in the trolley, right? Like, you know, and 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 all all methodically mm. poised. Then in the back of the car, one IKEA bag, oh. big blue IKEA bag, and then everything goes straight into the one bag. Right in the back of the car, just for the journey home. Get home on the drive. IKEA bag on the shoulder into the kitchen on the floor. Bosh, mm. done. And how many hernias have you had on the way back to the? <laughs> it is. It's a bit. It's yeah. If you if you go heavy, it's a bit hard on the shoulder. But you can you can drag it in in the in the hall. I tell you one thing I've noticed as well about about Aldi recently is have you seen the size of the barcodes now? The mm. barcodes are huge. They've, it's because of the self scanning, which. I don't know how I feel about self-scanning and Aldi, but now you're just like, you know, it's not that thing of like when you go to the other supermarkets and you chat, you're looking for the bar. These barcodes are like, you know, from the, like those films in the seventies with, with where they find like mystery islands with dinosaurs on and all, and all the insects are huge. Someone's creating these giant mm. barcodes. It doesn't feel normal or natural, but I, but, but it's just the Scandinavian way or the German way. And I, I'm all for it. I have barcode blindness when I'm self-scanning. I can't find a barcode, so I'm all for that as well. I hadn't even noticed. I don't self-scan in Aldi because I'd get me big shop there and I'd, mm. I'd, I'd, I'd still be there still now be there, from like yeah. Monday. But just that, yeah. that for me is is a real, real yeah. green light. Fair I don't have self-scan at my Aldi. Oh, man. See, I call it the middle class Aldi because we have self- the one I go to is sort of in between the studio and where I live. And it's in right. Gate It's in Gate Acre. As, oh, uh, Gate Acre. Where people, yeah. on, ch- where people yeah. on Channel 4 would say. And I... I call it the middle class Aldi, and uh, mm. they they've had them for a while because you know they, you can't inconvenience people in Gateacre for too mm. long. They've got more things. They've got Aldi dealerships to to visit. You know what I'm. You know what I mean. They've got they've got a, they've got important things to do, and they even got time waiting for someone to get from the back of the Aldi to the front of the Aldi in six seconds. They want it. They want their stuff then and there and in the back of their Range Rover, uh, and you know and that's 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 the way it should be. I feel for Gateacre. That that's certainly true for Gateacre. I was down south recently. I was near Watford, and I was in the self scanning section of Sainsbury's, and it was the first time I've experienced that. Where you get the you get the receipt, mm. and then you've oh. got to scan your own receipt to get out the shop. So they've actually oh, really? done their job for yeah. them, and then they don't trust you. And I'm like, yeah. you know what? If you, if you can find the annual that I've stored on my bed, <laughs> then you are welcome to. I was I was me. in a supermarket yeah. in, um, in in Paris. Uh, and honest to God, this supermarket, my missus would not have left this supermarket. Could you imagine like a, a French supermarket, the, the bread and the cheese? And the same thing happened to us. We were trying to get out and we're like whacking this thing. And someone was like, you've got to put your, you know, didn't say it like that. But, you know, you've got to scan your receipt to get out of the building, which I thought was, I was very, supp- I mean, that I understand why we don't have, we don't have that in the gate acre, Aldi. But um, I was just shocked to see that. But it, I, it leap forward. I, I personally am against self-scanning because oh, fair I, enough. I just it's not for me yeah. you know and i personally think you know i think it's affecting employment figures mm, you know or unemployment yeah. figures and i think ultimately it's just a bad thing i just yeah. much prefer people having jobs right doing their impressive aldi scanning thing we don't need machines to do that you know i'd rather 
or at their skills, mm. you know, and having a, a having a sort of brief packing relationship with them, mm. so to speak. I mean, I've never used the word packing relationship <laughs> before, and, and perhaps out of context, it may sound like the wrong thing, but you know what I'm essentially, um, you know, alluding to. Well, because where does it lead? Everything opens the door to something else. And before, yeah. like, wasn't it last year they were talking about doing dental work at home? I mean, but like, are they going to mm. have? Are they going to have like dentists where you go in and all the gears there and the chairs yeah. there? Yeah, and just let you crack on. Absolutely. Well, well, quite literally crack on. I think <laughs> you know if you don't know what you're doing. I feel like I, I, I feel like the shot me in that, Dave. I feel like before long you you'll be standing outside the town hall with an ex Southampton player going mm. on about self scanning. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's every chance. There really is every chance. I mean, it, you, on your head. yeah, it's it's not even that far removed from reality, Peter. <laughs> I think we'll get to a point soon where we'll walk into a supermarket and AI will just know what we want or a version of what we want based on, obviously, we'll have a barcode and we'll walk in and we'll know what we got last time and it'll all just be ready for us. And, I think, and I'm, and I'm quite happy that, with that. That Amazon one, that Amazon shop, it was called something like walk out when you're done or something and it was meant to like, yeah. you pick stuff up, you don't have to scan it, you don't have to pay for it, just to yeah. it your account. And then it came out that actually what's happening was loads of people in the sweatshop in India were actually monitoring stuff with cameras and yeah. stuff like they that. Were, yeah, it was like, it, it was, yeah, it was like, um, it was, it was what they had them in there that day in London. And it was, it was like, this is completely, we already know what you scan the barcode and we all, you walk out and we'll take the money and it's all part of it. And I think it was, it was basically like there was a lad in the back just watching everything. So that makes you think everything that they say is automated. There might yeah. just be the self scanning cells, there might just be a little fella in there just like, <laughs> yeah, writing down what you've bought. It's a little guy, you know. The guy who played R2-D2. Yeah, just a really small guy, but bent over, like, hunch, <laughs> because they're only small, aren't they? You know? <laughs> and it's actually his voice goes, cashier number four, please. Yes. Well, hang on, hang on. That's another thing just before we come off this topic. There, there was a stage... Let's not ever come off this topic, yeah. Peter. Let's just stay <laughs> here, please. Hang on. I, this, is, this is a safe space, and I'm much happier than I have been for the rest of the week. There was a stage. There was a stage in Marks and Spencer's where they changed the voices. I mean, I, I wouldn't know. I'm a man of the people. Um, I, I wouldn't... Well, I mean, it's one step down from Waitrose, but, you know, you only go there when, when Wales on holiday, but... Mm. Um, they changed the voice of the of the voice on the on the scanner machine. So you know it was like for comic release. So they suddenly had Dawn French oh, telling yeah, you yeah, what yeah. garlic bread you just and bought. And they, they had Anton Deck on there as well, didn't they? Oh well, of course they did. Yeah, they've got I, to make yeah, them. I mean, if you want, I literally again, I will slightly go to a different place here. I watched Saturday Takeout for the first time ever on Saturday because it was the last one. It's only to discover that show is basically an advertisement for every company in the world. Mm. So why wouldn't he have uh, a finger in the um the you know the the the, the self scanning machine yeah. economy? I was uh, at an M and S self scanning <laughs> uh, checkout on a motorway service. I do a lot of motorway service stations mm. in my job, so I'm there and I'm buying a sandwich and I. Is I it Nutsford? It wasn't Nutsford. I if because that's on the bridge, isn't it? It's kind of ne- neither on one side nor the other. Yeah, it, it's it hasn't made its mind up, has mm. it? It's just very centrist. <laughs> Absolutely, um, neither northbound nor southbound, just somewhere in the middle. Just doesn't know what it's doing. It's just mm. hanging about. Sounds like Kia Starve. Mm. Well, yeah, exactly. That's, that's where he gets his steak bakes. But I think it might have been a celebrity voice doing the MS at that point. So it may have been Dawn French, may not have been. It was. It wasn't the normal voice, and there was a woman next to me. She was quite old. And it, it, I think it's there was some competition. It said it could be you, mm. and she just went piss off. It won't be me. <laughs> <laughs> and I started laughing, and I don't think she was trying to be funny. She was just talking to a machine and, and swearing at it, and that that is funny. <laughs> that's where we, that's where we are as a as a as a nation now. We are we've become a nation that moans at self self service swearing at robots. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh my god. Well, that was a great 10 minutes, lads. I'll leave. Should we just leave it there? Yeah, just leave it there. <laughs> see, see, you, listen, we'll see you again next week. Have a lovely time. There's nothing oh. else really to discuss, is there? Right, let's just let's just talk about the elephants in the room, uh, as you, as it might be. Um, Saturday, Friday night, Friday night. I wish it was Friday night. Um, Monday night, Stamford mm. Bridge, a game where I and I think other people genuinely believed we could get something out of this game yeah, based so on I. based on Chelsea's current. Um, form really and we've gone down there Dave and we've basically gone lads we know you really like scoring goals do you do you want to do you want to see how many you can get against us because mm. we're going to be dead open really open and all our players are actually going to forget what positions they play in for the night 
Like you, and and I'm sure like as like sound as well. I felt quite confident about Monday night. I thought that actually the pressure was going to be off. Uh, it wasn't going to be one of these must-win games, and I thought psychologically that this will be good for us. Um, so much so, without you know trying to get into really depressing water, I th- sort of thought actually there's a lot less pressure on Monday than there is on Sunday against Forest, and I thought you know let's go and give it some. And actually, I thought they started quite brightly, and I was encouraged. And and I thought you know what they they they're, they're giving it a go. They're not overawed by by being at Stamford Bridge. Um, and obviously, Beto had that chance that he he skied over the bar and. Yeah, you know, but it was all looking good, and then suddenly it just it just all collapsed, mm. um, and just a catalogue of errors in every department. Um, I mean, if we look at the positives, Cole Palmer has got to be one of the buys of the season, hasn't he? Oh, that's a real positive. Th- Sam, well, how, I mean, you, how are you feeling about that positive, Sam? I'm trying. No, I'm trying to like look at look at the positives because <laughs> he he looks he looks great. But I mean, we're a fucking mess. What's your thoughts yeah. on Cole Palmer, <laughs> Sam? I, I thought he was very good. Uh, I thought I'm trying, I can't think of any other positives. The game's over. Oh, that's it, isn't it? That's the positive. It's it's yeah. over. We don't have to go there again till next season. Yeah. The, uh, the the just I don't know the, the positivity that I had was sucked out so quickly, and then we then I said this on the radio the other day, but basically it reminded me of when I used to play sensible soccer on the Amiga. And when I was like at 16 and I go to the toilet and my mate had unplugged my joystick while I was <laughs> in the toilet and I come back and I couldn't figure out what was going on, why my mm. players weren't doing what I'd asked them to yeah. do. And that, that's what Sean Dice was like. Yeah. Yeah. He stood on the sideline. He didn't know what was going on and he didn't do anything to it, to, to stop the rot. And he no. brought subs on at half time, but like it was just, it was, it was pathetic to yeah. watch. And in the second half, I ended up, everyone had gone to bed in our house and I'm sat there. I thought, I can't. I was tempted to turn it off, which I never do. Mm. And I thought, I'm not going to turn it off. I'm going to watch it because I'm only going to end up just checking the score on BBC Sport anyway and just, you know, I feel worse. So I got my guitar out and I never played the guitar, but I just got my guitar out. I had the sound dead low and I was just strumming on my guitar. And then I started trying to come up with a song called The Everton Blues. And I wrote only wrote, I wrote one lyric, which I'll share with you, which is, um, it was... Uh, FFP, PSR, we don't know who our owners are. <laughs> it's good, I like it. Yeah. And then I put the guitar down and thought, I've probably peaked. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Now we know why Ned's so good at music, because he just watched Everton his entire life, this version of Everton. Now we know why he's an absolute genius at, at music. Um, just going back to your, your computer game, there, it, to me it felt like, you know, it, I don't get like FIFA or EA Sports 24 very often, but I bought it this year because it changed, and I thought it might be good. This, so you pick up, you pick it up, and you go online as a 45 year old man, and you've got all that enthusiasm, and you pick Everton as your team, and you come up against some kid who plays as I don't know Barcelona, PSG, Man City, and basically that's what happens. You go in with all that enthusiasm, and before you know it, you're six nil down, thinking, "Why did I just pay 60 quid for this?" Mm. game like mm. why did, like why did i just do that you know it's thinking that it's again it's the everton thing of thinking things are going to be different just because in your head you had a positive idea that it was going to be and yet the reality is is that you're too old your fingers don't work and these kids are running circles around you and that's effectively what everton were on monday night yeah 100 percent. but it wasn't it it wasn't even like we had nothing going forward, but we were solid in a, you know, park the bus kind of way, which I thought we would be. I thought, you know, if nothing else, we will be tough to break down. You mm. know, I didn't think that we'd have much going forward, but I thought we'd be, be tough to, to break down and they might kind of, you know, eventually get, you know, get a, a get a goal and one goal would be in it. But it was so different to that. But again, you know, I think a lot of it down to, I thought Carl Palmer was excellent. Yeah, he was. He's, he's a great player. But do you know when you watch us, <laughs> actually, this Sam, honestly, you no, know when you watch us or you watch like if you watch if you watch Champions League football this week or you watch the games last week, Man City versus Real Madrid, that's three three. Or you know when you watch us, it's honestly it is like watching a different sport, isn't it? It mm, really yeah. is like you know I've I didn't play to a, the highest standard, but there was times when I thought quite I thought well about myself as a footballer, and I've turned up to play against the team that and you think got a good got a I've got a good chance today, and 
you're playing with lads who, you know, the kind of lads who uh, have had trials or who have played for someone, and you just get destroyed, and you see football on another level, and that's that's to me is what like what watching Everton's like at the moment. It's like it's watching people who fully get the game and understand how to put a team together. And I watch us, and I just think if we just picked eleven fellas off the street, you know, and even our good players are watching, just think. You are you offer nothing, you know. Some of our players will pick the ball up and go for a run, and when you watch good players go for a run, it ends up with something, or they lay it off, and then they get into ours. Just end up running into the defender, and I really have no idea of as a football team what we are trying to do. Yeah, it's uh, it's like watching the same sport but slightly different, isn't it? It's like rugby league and rugby union. Like I don't know which one we are, but we're playing <laughs> which we're playing footy, but we're playing a different code where mm. you don't have to actually have any cohesiveness and you can play negative football without getting results. Because uh, I mean, some of the football's been so poor, and yet it's not effective. So it's like, what what are we doing? What's the mm. what's the point if we're not actually yeah. yielding any results from it? But the the the, the way the players run around and and. Horrible to see Branthwaite. I know he had a stinker, but mm. when he came off, and Michael Keane or Michael Keane, Michael Keane, Wa, as they call him in yeah. Gay Taker, yeah, uh, <laughs> came on, and you just think we're back, we're back to this again, and yeah. we just, we're, it's almost like we're on this horrible time loop where we're back. Where I mean, how long has it been now? Where we've been looking at Michael Keane going, he should never play for the club again, mm. and and he and he did, out, <laughs> and he and he. He keeps coming since back, he was at Burnley. Back. Yeah, I know. I mean, but but the other the other nice thing is that when you look at the remaining fixtures, is that not only us and us alone get to enjoy this spectacle of total football because four of the next six games are televised, are they not? Yeah, you know, so are, the whole yeah. world mm. can see just how impressive uh, we are um, at the moment and revel in our tactical mastery. I mean, I've never felt as low as an Everton fan as I do at the moment. I don't mean at this precise moment because I'm mm. just trying to block it out at the moment. You know, mm. I'm just trying to kind of like just almost not dwell on it too much. But just generally, especially when I'm watching the match, I've never felt this low really because it just feels hopeless and and there doesn't feel to be any kind of there's no there's no like light that we're trying to reach. There's no, I mean, there's the stadium, but even that looks like with all the ownership problems, you don't mm. even know. The direction that's going to go in and it's just it's really really demoralizing and it's a case of when you when you watch the team like that and then you look at the results or, or the, the fixtures coming up and you just think well can we even get any more points can we get i, I can't see us winning at this point i can't yeah. if we can if, change if we can't though then we deserve to be relegated don't we like yeah, we, yeah absolutely yeah, the fixtures are there for us to, it's a yeah. goal win aren't they let's be yeah, honest yeah um, there was the, the the one thing which I thought summed up in many ways the the mess that this club is in on every level and has been for a number of years with historical mismanagement after mismanagement was to see Deli Ali in the studio. Yeah, right? yeah, and you know, I wish Deli Ali uh, nothing but the best in terms of his future playing and beyond. I absolutely do. Yeah. But I just thought, here's someone who I think it's fair to say has never fully fitted into the club for no. whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. You know, and there he was in the studio looking mm. slightly dismayed by the whole thing. But I think the thing that got me was where, and this is no, I think you know what I'm going to say, yeah, but this on. is this is this is nothing against him because yeah. you know he he said all the right things, but when he sort of said about the fact that you know obviously they had to analyze the game as a whole and how good Chelsea were and how how poor uh, Everton were, and he used the phrase you know and obviously it's not nice nice to see for for my club and I thought oh god yeah it is technically yeah. his club. Yeah, but he looks so much like it's not his club mm. through no fault of his own. Do you know what I'm trying to say? No, and no I just, I'm just a bit like, how on earth has this it, happened? He's still getting paid a wage <laughs> week in week out because not because it's his fault, because the club and the management structure at the time yeah. felt that it was the right move. I and know. you think, well, no wonder we're in this complete mess financially and everything else if mm. decisions like that and it just i don't know i know it's only a tiny no, thing no, but it just right. kind of, it sort of brought it into focus for me as i'm sitting there on the sofa trying you're to find right. something positive and kind of no. going this is a shambles 
You're right, Dave. I, I, I actually tweeted at half past eight on Monday night. 3-0 down after half an hour and a lad on 100k a week without 90 minutes to his name in two years is going to tell us why at half time. F- mm. FML. And that's, mm. <laughs> that's at 5,000 likes. Thanks, everybody. There um, you go. Because cause, cause it is, it's like, that's, that is that is the joke of the situation is that mm. a lad that we don't recognise as an Everton player is in studios. And by the way, he, he doesn't have, like, and again, I'm not being personal, but the lad clearly doesn't watch football because when they asked him about the Arsenal game on um, Sunday versus Villa, he didn't know the game had been played at the Emirates. Like, he didn't, he was there and it was almost like, how are you, mate? And that's great, no problem with that at all. But I just thought, couldn't you have brought him in in a, on a different week when Everton weren't playing and Everton weren't going to get a hide? Couldn't you have brought him on next week's Monday Night Football when it's got nothing to do with Everton? Mm. And actually, you can have a chat about with the lad about the overshadowing of actually the club he doesn't, does but doesn't play for is playing. And, and that is just the joke of a football club that we are that those things happen and that player hasn't played and and we don't know what's going to... You know, he basically said, I'm not going to play again this season, but I would, maybe I'd like to stay at Everton. It's like, what are you, what's going on here? Mm. It, the whole thing is crazy, but obviously next week, it's a huge week starting from... Well, starting from uh, Sunday, Sunday and then Sunday, Wednesday, and then Saturday. We know Brentford is Saturday now because City got knocked out. But that is, that's just a humongous week, isn't it? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. Um... I was chatting to a Forest fan yesterday and uh, he, I was saying a big game coming up and he was like, yeah, yeah. He said, you know, he said, but all right, scoring goals, we just can't keep it tight. And I I think then he was waiting for me to say something positive about my team. And I went, mm, that'll be all right then. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I think he still stood there waiting for me to speak. Yeah. But because, sorry, just to jump back onto the Deli Alley thing. Go I mean, on. that's like, that's a big mistake that I've made. There's no, there's, mm. clearly that was a big mistake. But if big decisions are being made incorrectly, I'm sure smaller and medium decisions have been yeah. made incorrectly yeah. and have been for, for for years. The other thing is that the the other signing that has had a bit of game time recently, Beto, especially on Monday, mm. and he he just looks so poor. He just looks yeah. like he doesn't. I don't know whether it's the system that he's not fitting into, but he doesn't look like a thirty million pound player. No, not at he all. He really doesn't. Now, something I tweeted on um, Monday night. It's the first time I've thought this. The first time I've vocalised, the first time that the th- thoughts crystallised in my mind. But I, I suddenly thought, watching that game, would we have been better just getting relegated in '98 instead of staying up against Coventry? <laughs> just getting relegated, getting rid of Ken Wright, building the King's Dock, and then getting the, the football club club run by adults for the last 25 years. I yeah. don't know. Would we be? In no, I know. I know what you're yeah. saying. Um, and it would have been a lot more. If you were going to get relegated, the, the 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 issues then would have been a lot less than they are being relegated now. Um, we have clung on for so long, but it no, it's it, I I do fully understand what you get because the, the idea of going down a lot. I've heard people say, "Oh, we, it's a good we could restart." And it's Phil have said that, haven't they? You yeah. know, and it's been like, "I'm not buying that." No, it's, it's I'm not buying that. There's too much risk involved. You can't just. You can't just do what was sort of feasible in the old days where it was a bit like, you know what, let's go down for a season, sort ourselves out, get rid of the dead wood, you know, recruit again and then come straight back up. It doesn't yeah. work like no, that, no, you know, because no. as as the likes of Sunderland have proved in the past and, you know, people like this and the ports and of this world, you know, you, you, you could go down and down. Yeah, yeah. And even even the top of the even the top of the championship this season, you know, Leicester looked like they were gonna fly back up, and and then they by no means gonna come come back straight back up. None of the promoter teams are guaranteed it at the moment, so even just that is is um, no, there's no no way you're definitely gonna gonna come back up. And Everton would have to basically sell everybody mm. and start again. And the players he started again would wouldn't be Premier League quality. So even if you did come up, you mm. need another massive injection. You, and then what, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you end well, up with Forest then. Yeah, you then need another what? Two hundred million pound minimum to, mm. to to get back in. Yeah. What Everton need to do is somehow survive. And people go, you can you can start again. Well, why can't you start again in the Premier League? Why yeah. isn't that feasible? Why isn't it from why a, can't from you, a higher position of, Yeah, with yes, the money? Right. With the yeah. money. I mean, there's there's much less there's much less risk to rebuild where they are now, still in the top flight. Um, I, I, I honestly, I think the going down would be would be disastrous. Yeah, it would I be. Really oh, do. certainly now, certainly now, and yeah. I think um, that's why these next few games are just so. I, I, it's going to be horrible to watch because mm. if 
if we can realistically, we don't we don't need that many more points, do we? To mm. just to just stay up there, but yeah. it it's just because they're all six. Po- well, a lot of the games are six pointers. There's going to be such pressure, and I'm not sure how our players handle pressure. I'm not sure they thrive under it. They certainly don't seem to enjoy it. So, see, Brentford are safe now. I think unless Luton do them on Saturday. I think I think Brentford will be all right. I think that five gap, the five point gap, is them um, safe. I think it's obviously it's, it's between us, Forest, and Luton now. Yeah, it's, I think it's for us, we've sim- got to, simple as that. We've got to be Forest, and we can't be beaten by Luton. I think they're no. the two. They're the they're the the two major ones, aren't they? And yeah. then that sets us up for Sheffield United, which will be the last home game of the season. So yeah. they're the two things I think that have got to happen. If we, you know, it would be well, it'd be four points if we were to be Forest. We go four points above them. And then, you know, you have got that game in hand. I know everyone will, will obviously write Liverpool off, but who knows at this stage, the way they've been recently. And then, you know, that's, as I said, if we can't get enough points out of these games, then we will be relegated. And As you and, say, it's not, it's, yeah. we, we haven't got an unfair run in. No. Um, you know, it, it, it's in our hands. People have been saying that for weeks, but unfortunately, yeah. you know, the games keep, keep passing us by. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's still in our hands, you know, with the likes of Forrest to play, with Luton to play, with Chef U to play. There's points to be had there, and if they don't get them, and as you say, they don't, they don't yeah. deserve to stay up. But the 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 other the other twist in the tale, of course, is that if they do do what they need to do, um, or you know, more to the point, if they actually avoid the drop by the skin of their teeth, is that we then finish the season still not sure. Yeah, whether well, they're safe or not. Well, ho- hopefully, hopefully we'll have enough points that it won't matter. Uh, but but who knows? Well, yeah, but as you say, hopefully. Yeah, but it might not. You know, I mean, no. to be honest with you, at this moment in time now, if somebody offered us the chance of finishing seventeenth on goal difference, mm. right? Yeah, we'd take it. Yeah, yeah, we'd take I it if if that if, if if there was if there was a cash out now option. Of actually seventeenth <laughs> yeah. on goal difference, you take it all day long. Mm. But the reality is that this year, for the first time in the history of 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 the world, it might not be done yeah. and dusted. It's just that it's all leading towards the final home game of the season oh, again. again. I know last season it was the last the last game of the season. Mm. The one before was the penultimate game mm. of the season. Yeah. But it's that last home game where. It's whatever happens. I think I think it's likely that that is going to be a must win. Yeah, and then the pressure, like last season, was horrendous. Yeah, the Crystal Palace game the season before was bad, and we escaped. Last season was not fun in the slightest. Even when we won, it was just horrible. It's just gonna it's it's gonna get worse. And then realistically, <laughs> realistically, we survive, and we're probably going to be yeah in a similar situation next absolutely. year. Absolutely, a bare minimum before mm. we can start to then absolutely away from the drop. Yeah, and everyone's just everyone's beaten down by it. You get, I see that by. I mean, I know that internally. Like last couple of, years, I mean, not maybe not last year, but the year before. Ev- you know, you couldn't sleep. You're working out all the connotations. Now I'm just like, almost like whatever. So if it was going to another year, and I think most people feel the same. I think the fan base are very much of like, we've done everything we can. We mm. really have done everything we can, and people will still keep pushing things. We're blue on Sunday and all that kind of thing, which is great. But I do think the fan base are getting to a point now where it is a case of you're the players. Actually, you're the only ones who can change this story. We've done everything we can and you still keep serving us up performances like that. And I think, you know, all the lip service and everything, it only goes so far. It really does. So it's on the players now to change the Mm. narrative. It really is. It really is because no one's going to feel sorry for them. I don't think anyone feels, no one on the outside feels sorry for us, really. And I think we've we've sort of stopped feeling sorry for ourselves, even with the points deduction. Because now, when we when we get to a point now, I think most people look at the points deduction and go, Okay, we don't miss maybe we didn't deserve that many points, but we but we deserve to be punished for our club being as terrible as it has mm. for you know, for the mismanagement of it. So we're not gonna get any sympathy, but uh, But this is all you know, talking about the points again, going back to to the points deduction at the end of last year is that it's all a mindset thing. This is what we keep saying yeah. week in, week out. It's so much of a mindset and a mental problem within that squad mm. now because 
you know, there was a lift that we saw after the first points deduction. And mm -hmm. actually, you know, and it's a, it's a, it's becoming a cliche now, but, you know, it galvanized the squad to use that word again. And they all pulled together and as a club and everybody was a bit like, you know, you were going to get the points back. And sure enough that they did, you know, because it was a different it was a different outlook. Um, and I do firmly believe that with the players that we've got, if the mentality was right, we've got nothing to nothing to worry about for yeah. the remaining for the remaining games. There's enough points in there. They go at it in the right way. They'll be OK. Yeah. But unfortunately, the mindset's not been right for a while. And the likes of Monday night has then completely shattered the confidence of many mm. within that squad who were borderline beforehand. And yeah. this is the thing that is so concerning yeah. with the fixtures uh, coming up, you know. Well, I, 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 I often say, I think, mindset and mentality is a big part of what makes good players good players. They're all technically very good footballers, mm. but it's that mindset, isn't it? It's being able to switch yourself from, you know, and any, anything anyone does, you know, Sam, you stand in front of people, uh, you know, heckling you and things like that. You're one man standing on a stage. You need a good mindset, don't you? Be a lot of good comics who crumble under that. Mm. But, you know, you, you, go, you go and do that, Sam, and that's what might make you separate you from... Uh, a bit, another comic or or having that good comeback to, for a heckler to put them down. That's what separates you, isn't it? It's that mindset. Yeah. I, but I think like any kind of elite sports people have just, yeah. you know, they've all, like you say, they've all got to have a certain technical ability mm. or else they wouldn't even be where they are. They're all mm. athletes. They're all fit. But then you've got, it's those little extra 5%. I mean, it, like to go to the complete extreme watching that what was the uh, the, the last dance that michael jordan documentary yeah, yeah. i mean he's like a freak in he in yeah. terms of how he convinces his brain to, to like he he creates like personal rivalries with opponents that don't yeah. exist just so he can batter them <laughs> yeah. which is just unbelievable so you don't even have to get to that that level but yeah going back to that thing you were saying earlier about like it's like watching a different sport our players are just that they, they seem to be bogged down by the occasion they seem to be kind of the, the, the situation that they're in feels sticky. Yeah. It feels mm -hmm. like they, they look leggy, they look tired, they look weighed down by it. And it's just, and this yeah. is why we end up spending 15 minutes talking about self service checkouts because this, this. <laughs> I'm happy to do it again. <laughs> Dave, you go on, haven't you got something to finish the, the, the podcast? I, I, do, off? I do, I do, I do, I do. Wait, it might literally finish the podcast off. <laughs> Um, there was a few questions which I had sort of changing the subject away because I think we've, we've dealt enough with, with yeah. the doom and gloom. Yeah, yeah. Is I was out on my bike the other day. And I was just out getting a bit of fresh air for a few hours. And there was a few things I saw on my ride. And, you know, when you see a sign when you're riding a bike, you start to think about it, you know, because, and so I sort of daydream and think about these different things. And there were three things that I saw on this one ride. And I realized that on the way back, that I didn't fully understand any of them, right? One was smart water. I'll give you them all first, right? Yeah. And then we can go through them. Mm. The first one was smart water. The second one was anti-climb paint. And the third one was cloud storage, which I know is a different kind of world. But then I realized that at the age of nearly 40, Sam, right, is that <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I don't fully understand any of these things. I don't know what smart water is. I don't know what anti climb paint is. And I certainly don't fully understand cloud storage. And I, I just wondered what. I wonder I whether back on Radio One there, Dave, because they, they sound like bands that I've never heard of. That are <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like Cocker and Polly. That's it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> hey, we need to cross the Maida Vale and listen to Cloud Storage. <laughs> it's, it's Cloud Storage, especially. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand any of those. Smart Water sounds what, like what is that knows where to go. Well, I think I think what it is is that it's it's a smart water. I think in the same way as anti, I think they're in the same area. I think they were behind some big spiky things. I think both smart water and anti climb paint are all. Uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, sort of preventative. Correct. Yeah, yeah, they're sort of to stop baddies getting in ultimately. But I don't know how they work. How does anti climb paint work? How can you not climb on certain paint? It just looks down at you very disapprovingly. Ooh, mm. you can do that. Mm. Smart water is a traceable liquid and forensic asset marking the system that is applied to items of value to identify thieves. And the, uh, to so it's like, remember the old days when there's like, I don't know, there'd be a film where they're robbing a bank and then they're like, don't get the pack, don't get the pack. And then someone yeah. gets the pack and all the purple paint goes over them. Okay. It's basically, that's, that's what that is. All right, anti-climb paint then, Ped? Uh, I'll tell you now, but it does sound like something when you start work experience, doesn't it? Yeah, like sort of like there, yeah, like like tartan paint. And, Someone you know, send you for a bit of yeah. go and get some anti-climb paint, please, mate. No, um, 
Yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's 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 legal. That was the first thing that's popped up on Google. It's very much legal. Um, I just don't really know how it works. I don't know how I'm you can have something that you can't climb on. Is it is it slippy? Well, or that would make sticky? sense, wouldn't it? You know, so you couldn't. Yeah, because sticky would help. Sticky would be good. Like really smooth would hinder mm. your ascent. It's it forms a, a or a, descent. A, it forms a thin skin, helping to prevent leaves and the like from sticking to it. But because it is a, a, a big, complicated word, uh, any pressure applied to it will make it return to liquid, making it difficult for an intruder to gain a, a hand or foothold. Uh, so it's interesting. This... Well, in fact, do you, do you know what? It begs the question is, I wonder if the two things could be combined and ah. whether you could have a sort of anticline paint that would then become a liquid form of smart water and then would be indelibly... Mm. Uh, marked on the intruder in question. It sounds like a Spider-Man villain. I must be honest. Mm. I mean, even the net, it's because it's a thick so tropic, which again sounds like a Spider-Man villain. Not a very good one, not a poppy one. Yeah. A, a, a shite one from the sixties with Stanley mm. was off his tits on LSD or something. Mm. But it does sound, it does sound like something like that. So, and obviously, cloud storage, as we know, yeah. are on How tonight. Does that work? They're on tonight, seven o'clock with Joe Wiley. Oh, sorry, they're on tonight. I oh, beg your pardon. Yeah, from Made of Vale. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of synths in that band. Yeah. yeah, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> Staring stuff. Yeah, yeah. Cloud storage makes me think of you know those those storage centers that you can get now where like those like safe storage stuff. Yeah, yeah. Safe storage big yellow one or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a business. Yeah, that is we a business. Talking, we we were talking before before we the cameras were rolling about biz, good businesses to to invest in mm. storage space. No one would have thought. Stor- yeah. Ago, but no one wants to throw anything out. What we're saying as well, you know, the crematoriums, uh, for me, the best investment of all, you know, because as a business, they are always running, you know, yeah. uh, all year it... round. And they're, they're recession proof. Mm. You know, people always need that service without being too sort of dark and mawkish about it. You know, it's just one of those things. And I think that it, it's got to be a good investment. And you can a mobile one. <laughs> yeah. Crematorium. Like a, like those old libraries that used to drive around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To get out and... well, yeah. Can... Like a sort of vanatorium. Let's go on Dragon's Den. Yeah. Vanatorium. Yeah, yeah, Vanatorium. Absolutely. You know, there's got to be could, something in that. You could own the storage space and the creme, and if someone failed to pay for a month, you could just <laughs> yeah. take all the stuff out, take it the creme and burn it all. Yeah. You you see, I, I see, I, that's interesting because my mind was working the other way around because I was, I was thinking that actually <laughs> the, the, what should have ended up in the creme might have ended up in, in the big yellow safe store or somewhere mm. like that. But, yeah, yours makes more sense, yeah. Pat, to be honest well, with that's, you. That's that a process, first. That's, that process is more logical than mine. Mm. You could swing both ways, though. Well, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. It's the, it's, the, it's the threat, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. it is Business the threat. Thing. But also mm. for the storage, I mean, I can see a time when people are probably living in, st- you know, moving out your mum and dad's when you're about living 20 storage. Months, and you're literally just moving to a storage container. But to be honest with you, I mean, some of them are actually larger and more luxurious than some million yeah. pound flats in parts of that there, London. Mm. Put that on <laughs> you your know? pamphlet, Barrett's house. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> but instead of a storage space, shouldn't we be encouraging people to have a big deep cleaner their house and get rid of everything? Because if yeah. you've ever done that where you've had like a what do they call it, like a declutter, yeah, you try and do it at the start of each year and you've just got to be ruthless and throw stuff out and you're like, well, What's this? It's like an old Breville machine. What's <laughs> this? It's like all stuff you bought off eBay that you just don't need, it's like old Garfield books that you've never yeah. read. Mm. You know, just get rid of them all. It's 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 quite cathartic. Have you ever done that? Have you ever had a big like clear out of stuff every so often i i I get everything from my my garage is just full of like crap Mm -hmm. right so i get everything out and i put it all out and then i I clear it and then i put it all back in again but it does feel good to be ordered (laughs) fair play i'm waiting for stacy solomon to come around with her 12 kids and and get it all boxed off for me to be honest (laughs) if i'm honest that's like i'm not doing it myself i want stacy solomon to tell me what things i need to throw out I think that'd be good. That's, that's the future. I mean, she's got, she, well, she's literally got a show. My missus watches it on BBC One, and you're just thinking, why aren't, why didn't you use this time clearing the shite out of our house? Never mind watching mm-hmm. Stacey Solomon. Someone clean else do it. Someone else's mm. who've just happens to have 14 sets of false teeth and doesn't know which one to keep. 
you know, giving them away to charities. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What you don't want to do is end up on one of those shows about hoarders where they have just yeah. stacks of stuff and then, like, it, it often falls on people, doesn't it? And yeah. then they can't mm. get out. And yeah. it's like a big it's stack of old structurally unsound you know there's like a whole stack of kind of now and zoo magazines and stuff like that well, there's, that might your, just there's your advert isn't and... it there's your advert mm. for the creme and the storage put it in yeah. storage or you'll end up in the creme it's, yeah it sells itself yeah i mean is there is there is there a hybrid word like crematorium or something in there in <laughs> oh, terms yes. of like all the all the all the crap that's well, we, listen, we'll work on this. Maybe we need to have like yeah. a sort of private off-air meeting in yeah. terms of this yeah. potential new business idea. Blue Sky thinking about uh, in our shitatorium. Mm. Absolutely. It's good. It's good. I like it. Winning. <laughs> we're, we're, we're winning. We're winning. Players. We're winning. As I say, we Thanks, Sam. get this perfect. It's just a shame that Dragon's De- the series of Dragon Den's finished because I'm sure Deborah Meaden will be all over this. Oh, she all loves it. And especially if you put an environmental twist on there yeah, as well. Of course. I mean, she's well into that. Yeah. Yeah. And a bit of a bit of a... I don't know, bit of sense of something as well. It'll make it. Yeah, yeah. Right, we are done because I know, I know. Uh, Sam's got a literally his kids are literally standing outside the school. Like, remember that episode where Simpsons, where Bart Simpsons waiting? That's what it is. He's <laughs> literally outside the house. It, it's like the 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 clouds from Dubai are practically over yeah. his kids' head as we speak. So he's got to run and get them. So we'll be back next week for for a uh, uh, yeah for another interesting. Um, episode of the 1878 FM podcast. Thanks for joining us. See you later.